Hey everybody, it's Ms. Opium. Welcome to episode three of OOF. This episode has a special guest. Ms. M is uh, joining us again. Welcome. Thank you very much. Um, We don't have a name yet for this particular uh, podcast. We'll see where it goes, where it's going to take us, and we'll come up with a name later. Um, but what we what we wanted to talk about today was it's um, it stemmed from a conversation that we had had. We were having coffee one day, and we were talking about being proud, being confident mm-hmm. with um, when people ask us what we do. So we're kind of the same but a a little bit different. Um, If anybody recalls from our previous episode, uh, Ms. M had started her own business. And um, so we'll talk about her, uh, not struggles, but building of confidence Mm -hmm. with that. And for me, I am working on a side hustle that um, even in this podcast, I'm I'm not going to talk about it, but we'll touch a little bit on how intimidating it is to be able to say okay this is where it's going so let's get into it um so when we had coffee a few weeks ago Mm -hmm. we were talking about um you had been out somewhere wherever it was and Mm -hmm. people were asking you what do you do yeah just you know a normal conversation that normal when you first meet people that's typically you know the first thing that you say to each other is you know, oh, what is it that you do? Or what do you do for a living? And, and uh, it was a complete stranger that I had met. And I, um, my husband went first. And he's got a, you know, big job in a well-known oil and gas company. So he just sort of touches on that really quickly. And then it comes to me. And so I said, you know, I, I have my own business. And as I was saying it to her, I noticed my whole body language Um, change so instead of standing up straight and loud and proud and like my husband was when he mentioned who he worked for um, you know I kind of my my eyes went to the ground and I I felt you know like I slunk slunk her down a little bit and said oh I don't remember this and I sort of I sort of stuttered it and um, you know she 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 just said okay that's great and carried on and it was no big deal but I noticed it that I did that and I thought, where the heck did that come from? Like, why, why can't I, you know, before I owned my own business, when I used to work at a corporation, a big corporation, I would just say it. I would just say, oh, I work for, you know, this big corporation. This is what I do. But now for some reason, when it's my own thing, for some reason I feel, I don't know, I was feeling a little bit embarrassed. I don't know if that's even the word, because I'm definitely not embarrassed and I'm definitely proud of what I'm doing, but it was like a an imposter, like, you own your own business, yeah, I have my own business, and uh, I just wanted to bring that up to you that day we were having coffee, because I don't know where it came from, I don't know why I did that, (laughs) and, uh, you know, and and now that I'm conscious of it, I'm making an actual effort to, you know, be proud, I am proud, and why can't I say it proudly, and stand up, and hold my head up high, and, and say with confidence, I own my own business. So it's funny that you use the word embarrassed because I was thinking about that when I was thinking about this podcast and I, that was the first word that came into my head and it's like, no, 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 but the feeling of it, like the bodily feeling of it is kind of the same as being embarrassed. Yes. Yeah. It was not, it was not embarrassed. I was not embarrassed that I own my own business, obviously. Yes. a proud thing for me uh-huh. but I was almost like I don't know when, when you say that to people people usually have a comment or yeah you know oh or there's some judgment there's always going to be some judgment mm-hmm. there and and I don't know, this is still new to me I'm only you know month four in this <laughs> journey so I'm still going through the the different ups and downs of of owning my own business but yeah, it was just it was just an interesting thing that happened, and and you as well. You know, your side hustle yeah. is a complete one eighty from your day job. 
Yeah. You know, and yep. so at least mine, you know, my day job, this is the same industry for me, but yours is a complete 180. Mm-hmm. And so when people ask you, usually it's who who are the people who are asking you? Um, well, there's, there's not, there's not a lot of people who know about it yet. And I think my, sorry, as I'm kicking you, um, (laughs) I think my hesitation with it is that when I've told people that I do these podcasts, they immediately judge. You can tell by the look on their face. Hmm. And you can tell by, some people will take interest and actually ask the question, like, what do you mean you do podcasts? And they'll, they'll ask. But then there's other people that are just like, you know, that you, you get that thing and they kind of look at you like you're absolutely nuts. <laughs> like, who do you think you are, Joe Rogan? Well, eventually, <laughs> yes, I want to be Joe Rogan. <laughs> Um, so I think that's where it stems from is that I get, and I have to be choosy about, I'm learning this. I have to be choosy about who I tell this stuff to because they will immediately try to cut me down and make me feel like I am not worthy and I cannot do it. And I think that's where my shyness and my, my apprehensiveness comes from. Like maybe I can't. No, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. That makes perfect sense that you wouldn't want to tell people because you're afraid of, of the comments mm-hmm. back, mm-hmm. right? And maybe maybe that's partially, you know, some subconscious thing in me as well that maybe, you know, I'm not fully, I'm working on it, but I'm not fully 100% confident yet. And so, you know, when people ask me, what do you do? And, well, oh, I, I own my own business. I'm almost expecting them to look at me like that and go, really, you do? Really? Yeah. Yeah, I do. (laughs) You know? But... So... It's funny. Do you think... Do you think that it partly has something to do with the fact that we're women? Yes. Might. Well... Hmm. I don't know where where it comes from. Maybe. Because I... I kind of do. Yeah. Like in listening to podcasts that I've been listening to and reading books and just stuff, I dig myself into rabbit holes quite often <laughs> looking into stuff like this. And a lot of it for a lot of people stems down to the fact that as women, we're supposed to be less than. Mm. We don't live up to the man. And so, as an example, going by what you said, sorry, we have a guest appearance by at Wilmington's post. Um, When you said about your husband, you know, probably says what he does. Like, it it just, it paints that picture for me. I'm like, Mm -hmm. yes, because he's the man and he's confident in what he does and he's, you know, this this is his career. And then... For you, you know, like it's, it's, it's the typical parts we're supposed to play, right? Right. That's just, that old society, I guess, is still lingering in the background. And you know, that's, that's an interesting point because I can't remember where I heard this. If it was a podcast or something I read, but, um, men and women view qualifications differently Mm -hmm. so if a man is looking at say a job description that he wants to apply for and it calls for 20 skills and he might have only one of them Mm -hmm. he will still apply Mm -hmm. oh I've got one one qualification Mm -hmm. great and then you know if he doesn't get the job it's like you know, how could they not have hired me? I yeah. have qual- I had a qualification. Yeah. Or or on the flip side, he's just that confident and, and he'll end up getting the job. For a woman, a woman will look at those same twenty qualifications and say she has nineteen of them and is missing one. No, she thinks, Oh no, I can't apply because mm-hmm. I'm I don't meet all of the criteria mm-hmm. and she won't apply for it. 
so that's true which is you know which is such an interesting thing and so maybe maybe yeah maybe you know my husband talking I mean he's been doing it a long time and you know eh, you know this is this is his world that he knows but for me maybe there's some subconscious I'm not qualified to do this so you know I don't really want I don't know I don't want others to see that yeah but in the flip side by me acting sheepish about it Ooh, that shows, uh-huh. you know, that I don't, <laughs> that I don't necessarily have what it takes, but, but, you know, so it's important. It's keep your head up high and be proud and, and, you know, this is a big deal. This, there's many people who wouldn't be able to do what you and I are doing mm-hmm. and who don't. Mm-hmm. They so just think about it. They think about it and never do it, or they just could never do it. They just, I, I've been told that by so many of my friends or family that, oh, you know, good for you because there's no way I could ever, I could ever do that. They don't want, you know, it's too much work or too much responsibility or too much, you know, too much, you know, whatever this is, unknown, yeah. up and down. So yeah. There's no consistency. So going forward, okay, so you recognized that point when you did that. And now, now that you recognized it after that happened, yeah, and well, I kicked myself. And now that you've told me about it, I'm paying more attention. But I also watch you. So, how are you like going forward? How are you? A, you're aware of it, but mm-hmm. how are you working at it so that you don't continue to do it, fall back to it, and you're moving forward and right. upward? So. Okay, so if I go back a little bit more just to add to this. Yeah. When I was on vacation in May, and I went to the Cayman Islands. Yeah. And I had, so we had dinner with friends of ours who own the house that we were staying in. They are two very, very crazy, intimidatingly successful lawyers who are both Canadian, but they've, they both got transferred down to the Cayman Islands and, you know, never looked back and make a gazillion dollars down there. And so, and, and you know, like have, being, being in a room with powerful kind of professional people, you know, I like it. I thrive out, off of it and I'd rather, like if I had to choose, I would want to be in that room. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm sitting there, there's six of us talking and I happen to be, you know, across the table from, from uh, the man, his name is Colin. And we're chatting and he looks at me and he says, so what is it that you do? Because I'm t- uh, talking to him about his amazing career. And I, I sort of looked at him and I said, oh, I, I'm, a, um, a, a, um, a, I'm a property manager. Oh, okay. And then my husband's sitting next to me and heard me and he turns in and interrupts and says, she just started her own business. <laughs> so then I said, yeah, yeah, I did. Then... Um, the friend goes on to say, oh, so what kind, you know, what, what, uh, who are some of your clients? Well, at that point, I didn't have any yet. And so that just started my whole, you know, confidence yeah. going down because now it's like, well, I just started my own business, but I don't know what I'm doing and I don't have any clients yet and I'm just fresh new and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> overthinking, just completely overthinking the yeah. situation, you know, so, so. That, I remember leaving, I remember feeling completely embarrassed to this guy who's this, you know, he didn't look at me funny and he didn't judge me, but I thought, oh man, like, You judged really? you. That's how I <laughs> respond to this guy who I, you know, yeah. like, ugh. So, that was strike one, and then I caught myself doing it again, you know, a few weeks ago. So, now that I've thought about it, I'm working really hard, I've, I've been journaling about it, and I've been writing down, you know, some mantras. So every morning I turn to my journal and I recite, you know, I am a successful businesswoman. I own, a, you know, an ex- a successful business that is, uh, you know, blowing up with success and, you know, the clients and wealth are coming to me. I'm just, I'm trying to remind myself that this is, this is something to be proud of and this is something I'm working my guts out at. So the daily mantras and affirmations about it are number one. And then when it turns to, because then I still struggled with, you know, who are your clients? What are you currently, you know, what are you currently managing or whatever? And 
I have some clients now that, um, but they're starting throughout the year, right? So mm-hmm. there's one now, and there's two in a couple of months, and two in, in a few months after that. So they're lined up, but I don't have them yet. And so whenever I would be asked, you know, what do you, what do you look after? What, who are your clients? I would get all embarrassed I don't have anything now. Oh, well, well, I don't have anything now. And to me, hearing myself say that made me sound illegit. Yeah. Right? Just yeah. made me sound like, well, okay, you're not a real business. So, you know, I've recognized that and now I've, I've changed that tune as well too. So now, you know, I have the clients. Mm-hmm. The work just hasn't begun yet. The commencement dates haven't yeah. been reached yet. But I have the clients. So now instead of saying, oh, I have some, but they don't start for a while, I just say, I have. You know, I have five properties and yeah. I have three clients. Yeah. And, you know, I'm just affirming that. And I get asked occasionally, how are things going? You know, how are things going in the business? And how are, you know, how's it been your, your first few months? And, and now I honestly look at them with a smile and I say, things are going great. Yay. Things are going great. I've got some business. I've got a few clients, you know, signed up with me and things are going great. And I just, and, and nobody ever says, oh, when do they start? Obviously, <laughs> right? We don't get into that exactly. detail. Exactly. So that's what I started to do. So now, um, you know, now I'm, con- step one, the fact that I'm conscious about it. Step two, I'm journaling about it, writing my mantras, my affirmations, getting myself to believe in what I'm saying. Yep. Right? Yeah. And, and then... Um, and then the symptoms of that were, you know, being embarrassed that I don't have, that I don't feel like a real business yet because I don't have anything, you know, <laughs> like under my belt yet, but I do. Yeah. And, and you're not, I don't need to get into detail about start dates and all that crap. And it's just, yes, I do. This is what I've got. This is how well we're doing. Yeah. And that's it. That's awesome. So that's very, very new. Um, but that's just started within the last couple of weeks. Yesterday I had yesterday was kind of a cool day because I had coffee with an old friend. He's one of the owners of a an engineering firm here in town, and it's been a couple of years since I've seen him. And we met for coffee, and he said, all of a sudden he almost starts interviewing me a little bit. He's like, "Wow, this is really cool." He's like, "So how are things going?" I'm like, "Oh, they're going great." The same thing I was explaining earlier. They're going great. And he says, "Good." He's like, "So you know, what have been some of your struggles?" What have been some of your stresses? You know, and he's asking me these questions, and I'm like, you know, and I'm answering them. Like, I'm finally in a spot where I'm like, oh, this has been my biggest stress, or this, you know, this has been my yeah. biggest struggle that I didn't expect to, to experience. And I left the coffee meeting feeling like, that was really cool. <laughs> I felt like that made me feel like I was way more experienced. And I am, like I was being interviewed in a talk show, like, you know, reflecting years down the road. But it it was like, you know what? It made me realize that just in four months, how much I've experienced, Mm -hmm. how many struggles that I've had all at once, and that, you know, for the most part I'm overcome overcoming them. Yeah. Which is which is nice. Which is cool. (laughs) <laughs> you you have come a long way because I'm thinking that first podcast we did was either just as you were leaving your corporate job or just after I can't I think you were still there actually you had the about a week or so one, yeah I think I had a week left yeah. yeah and I think of all of that and now where you where you are it's fantastic and it's amazing it's very cool and it's you know like relying on um, making sure that my my support system is carefully in place mm-hmm. just like you were saying um, the people that I know don't don't um, see my you know don't see eye to eye with me on certain topics yeah you know I don't run them out of my life by any means but I'm careful with who I share my ideas and my thoughts and my frustrations with uh-huh because I do need somebody in my circle to 
bounce these ideas off and have somebody collaborate with me yeah or just tell me yeah great but hmm, I don't know if that's gonna work and this is why and you know just having having that support so when you say you know you're worried about telling the wrong people I totally get it because I think especially for for you too because it's such a 180 complete 180 from mm -hmm. from who the world sees of yeah. you yeah um I'm sure that it would shock many people oh yeah and um you know that makes that makes us vulnerable a little bit too right like yeah and if your confidence is already wavering on on it because you've never you know <laughs> like it's it's yeah. sensitive it's very very sensitive well well it is and it's funny that that we're talking about that so there's several aspects of my side hustle that I'm working on and a couple of them I'll be all gung-ho and ready I'm like okay I'm gonna work on this tonight and then I go to sit down to do it and I hear someone's comment running through my head and then I'm like okay and then you lose your fire I, I lose my fire I lose my confidence oh, no. and I push it aside and it's I'm recognizing that, but where I'm stumbling is being able to push that off and mm -hmm. say that person's comments are unjustified. They don't know me. They're judging. Mm -hmm. They're just making a judgment. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if you see, we're all guilty of it. Let's say you see some young guy, like he's 25, gets out of a $150,000 car and it's like, yeah, okay, daddy bought that for yeah. you. We don't know that. We yeah. really don't know that, but we all do it. And it's sort of that same you know what? superficial that judgment. Stems, stems from a bit of a jealousy thing too, right? Exactly. Like how do you get to do that? And I <laughs> True. can't. Yes. You know? Yeah. Or, or you see the skinny girl walking down the street with her designer bag and her high heel. This is me. Her high heeled shoes, and she's walking with confidence and you know, strutting her stuff. I'm like, damn you, skinny <laughs> little gang, I hate you. <laughs> and it's just, it's a jealousy thing, it's yeah. because I want to exude that confidence mm -hmm. that this person on the street has, and I don't have it. <laughs> so interesting because, just for the listeners, your side hustle is very creative, it's a creative, mm -hmm. it's it's. I don't want to say too much, but drawing and writing and reading yes. and, and, you know, that creating, creating, yeah. um, which is compared to your day job is an office job. Yes. Basically. Yeah. So, um, you know, which we don't get to be that creative in the office yeah. very often. So, you know, and in the past you have gotten some feedback from people who, who you care about, who have maybe not given you the best um, you know, <laughs> yeah. maybe not liked something you've produced and you did. So it, it hurt your feelings. Yeah. But I think what we need to remember is that you're, you're very, very talented oh, and you. you're, I love your, your work that you do. And there is going to be people who don't like it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Like yeah. when you create a drawing, like you're not doing a drawing for the masses you're doing you're tailoring to a very specific yeah group a very specific following and not everyone's gonna like it and so what that's true. right what you're what you're going to get is you're going to be bringing some bringing so much joy to some people who actually truly appreciate it yeah. and want it yeah and so that's really it's really hard to feel disliked and you know if someone doesn't like it well, you know, I'm the first to, well, what do you mean you don't like it? <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. And then, well, maybe I, I'm just, obviously, I suck at this, obviously. Mm -hmm. It's one or two people's mm -hmm. opinions versus a whole untapped area that probably would love it. It's true. You know, it's so true. It's hard. And it's, it's hard to, to, um, um, be brave enough to get it out there mm -hmm. to get the positive feedback yes so yeah I know and I, I know it's tempting to even like work under an alias uh-huh <laughs> right work under an alias and then it's like you know I don't know people on the street are talking about it and they don't know it's you and yeah. uh good or bad yeah right yeah but if it's good you're like that's me that's me 
over here, hi. <laughs> you know, with bad, you're like, yeah, phew, I don't know what that <laughs> was thinking. <laughs> but, no, but I mean, it goes back to, you know, be proud. Like, the work that you do is, is really, really good and be, not everybody can do that. Well, I appreciate that. And, so, and it's the same it's the same for you. Not everybody can do. Mm-hmm. Not everybody would have the guts enough mm-hmm. to do what you did. Right. And, and I'm I'm trying to recognize that. Yeah. Yes. And the fact that it's only been 4 months, like it kind of seems like oh, a long time ago that we had that conversation. <laughs> But at the same time, it's only been four months, and look at how far you've come already. Like that is pretty amazing. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. And yeah. And I think at the beginning I had said to you, because um, you had you had given yourself a certain amount of time where you wouldn't start to panic. Yeah. And then I had said to you during that time, I said, enjoy it. Get all your stuff ready. Get all your processes and everything going, because you're gonna get busy and it's gonna explode on you. And you're going to think back and think, geez, I wish I had that time back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and look. And it's true. It's starting yeah. to happen. Yeah. It's starting to happen. So, well, perhaps, perhaps, you know, doing, maybe trying what I was doing mm-hmm. for you, like mm-hmm. writing your mantras and your affirmations and, um, you know, because like I said, no, not everyone's going to like you. Actually, I'm doing this um, this self self improvement, self development course right now, um, done by a, a female entrepreneur, and she there's this whole part in there, and there's a quote that I actually wrote on a sticky note, and I pinned it to my board in my office, so I always look at it, but it says successful women are not afraid of being disliked. I like it. And that spoke to me because I do have this crippling fear of being disliked. Mm-hmm. And I have this crippling fear of being disagreed with. Mm-hmm. You know, like, um, so if I present my recommendations to a client, for instance, and the client comes back saying, no, no, I don't like that. We're going to go this way. You know, I my instant reaction is, oh, <laughs> well... Do I not know what I'm talking about? Like, why? Oh my God! Like, I I can't do this. I can't do this job. Who was I? What was I even thinking? <laughs> you know, going on my own. I don't have enough experience for this. I can't even provide a decent recommendation to someone. <laughs> but you know, really, then at the end of the day, my job is to provide the recommendation. But my, you know, but my job is to ultimately carry out the wishes of what the client wants. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I have to you know, shake, shake it off and carry through with what he's asking me to do. And so, so. I think to maybe simplify that, first of all, we have to recognize that um, if someone doesn't, if someone doesn't agree with us, it doesn't mean we're wrong. Right. Yes. Yes. And the, but it feels like I know we're wrong. it does it totally does but I think that's something to work on because yes. I need to work on that big time um, but the other part of it is is to make it like to really dumb it down is what's the difference between that like doing a proposal to someone or a recommendation and they don't take your recommendation or going shopping with a friend and saying do you like the blue or the red I like them both. Do you like the blue or the red? And they pick the red. But, yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, it's kind of the same thing. Like, really, dumbing it down, it's really the same thing. So, I guess maybe we just have to Not take bring it so it damn to, personally, yeah. right? Like, yeah. that's, that's what I'm doing. Like, I, I think, too, like, a lot of times, I've always been an overachiever. And I've always mm. been someone very focused and very ambitious. And as a result... Um, I've never, I've never really failed. I've never failed. Yeah. And so when I'm, you know, when I'm, when these recommendations maybe don't get accepted or, you know, whatever example that we're using, um, it's like this blow to my ego almost. Like, I don't fail. What do you mean you don't like that? <laughs> Terrible. But, but 
that you know it's all it's all part of the learning process right it really is and it's interesting i actually just saw a quote on instagram this morning i've seen it several times but it's about failing and a failure isn't a failure it's a lesson Mm -hmm. and we can learn from it and if we don't fail then we're not really going to grow and know what our achievements are right very true and as hard as it is to fail (laughs) yeah we we just have to figure out a way to to turn that around and make it turn around the mindset you're right yeah so and, yeah. and 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 even like in your example of you know a recommendation that's not accepted it doesn't mean it's a failure it's it's just you learn that maybe this particular client doesn't like that way of of going like whatever it is mm-hmm. you know and maybe that's you learn that about that particular client very true very true trial and error yeah. right because, I mean, yeah, I think it's it's the rejection. Yeah. Right? It's like, well, I put my, you know, I put a lot of time and thought into writing this recommendation. And then when it's not accepted, then, yeah, it feels like my instant thought is now I'm, I'm a little bit humiliated. Yeah. That I put myself out there and you didn't take it. Which now makes me feel like I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> it just spirals out of control in my own mind, and then my confidence like plummets, and it's like, oh my god, now I feel like an idiot. I don't know what I'm doing. I, I, I why didn't I recommend you know the other thing? Oh, duh, like dumb me. <laughs> so, okay, so take the confidence part of that, and maybe there's a way for those we'll call it rejection it's it's not but we'll call it the rejection how do you take that and turn it into a confidence booster Mm. like you know maybe you maybe it's something as simple as getting up um from the meeting and you still walk out you know all proud and what like whatever it is Mm -hmm. but I think I think for us because you and I are a lot alike that way we take everything we want to be we're perfectionists Yes, yes. And we do hold everything personally, but there has to be a way to turn that mm-hmm. and put it towards confidence. Ooh I, yes. ooh, I survived it. I survived the meeting. I survived him telling me no. Yeah. Maybe it's as simple as that. Yeah. And be proud of that. Yeah. And then, you know, you're telling yourself, okay, well, the next time somebody tells me no, it's okay. It's, that is okay. Yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah. Well, and to, like, it's not the end of the world. Like, okay, they didn't accept that recommendation, but they told me to go with plan B. And I still have a job, and I'm still carrying exactly. through the work process. I'm just a little stung, you know, <laughs> that my idea wasn't gone, wasn't accepted. Yeah. But but you're right. Like, at the, the, well, I'm saying it out loud, and I'm thinking, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm saying this out loud. Because it sounds really yeah. childish almost, but... It is this little this little ego mm-hmm. sting to the ego that it's like, well, what do you mean you don't like my idea? <laughs> <laughs> I have the best ideas, don't you know? But you know what? Having said that and listening to what you're saying about, you know, take it as a learning opportunity, I yeah. have to say that there has been a situation in where a comment was made to me and I thought, well, that's kind of a weird question to ask me. I've never been asked that before. And I You know, and I was a little bit taken aback by it to think, well, I don't know the answer because I've never been asked that question before and now I'm embarrassed, but no problem. I'm a professional and I'm going to go and figure this out. And that was the whole model number on mechanical equipment. Oh, And I ended up, it ended up being like a a life-saving exercise when I went through all that and I learned the differences between different models that I didn't actually even know existed. Never once in my entire career has, has anyone ever mentioned anything to me about yeah. model numbers. And I didn't know that either. <laughs> and now, you know, now it's like, okay, now actually I have a little bit of an advantage in my industry now Yeah. that I can differentiate this and I have a little bit of, bit of a bit more knowledge on the subject. Yeah. So, see, I was there embarrassed that I didn't know it and the first time I was asked about it, I 
you know, my instant reaction was one thing, but now I've learned all about it and, mm -hmm. and I can use it to my advantage going that forward, is, that which is, is good. Awesome. It is. It's so, really good. Yeah. Well, I think this might be a good place to stop. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd be, I'll be... I'll be following up with you and asking you to come back because I want to watch your um, your process of the road along the way and see what you're, where you're at and how your mantras and mm -hmm. morning routines and all of that kind of stuff is making a difference. Mm -hmm. um, there's, I think I might have shared it with you. I, I, have, I'm, I haven't posted these yet, but I wrote a blog, and it was based on, this is about the confidence thing, something as simple as the clothing that you pick for the day. Yeah. And it's like, maybe that's all, I, not all, but maybe that's the start. Like, mantras, morning routine, the clothes you pick for the day, working out, mm -hmm. the food you eat, like maybe it's all of that kind of stuff put together. So... Yeah. Maybe we can have another podcast in, you know, in the future and we can talk about all that stuff too. I would love that. Me too. I'm obsessed with trying to find the, the right routines that work. Mm -hmm. I'm obsessed. I have this romantic thought in my mind about a really productive morning routine. And uh, so we can talk about that later because I'm still testing out a few, <laughs> a few routines to see what works and what isn't working. Well, I'll be interested to hear about that because I'm a creature of habit. And even though, though I know that my morning routine isn't the best and it's not really working for me, it, it's my routine and I can't. You can't veer from I can't, you can't veer from no, it. No, because it'll freak me out even though, even if I tried something else and realized that it worked and it felt good, I'd still... <gasps> But mm -hmm. we can have another conversation about that. Excellent. So thank you, Miss M. And thank you. we look forward to hearing how things are going in the future. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.